What is happening guys? Welcome back to another episode. I hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, it's a beautiful day out here. Today we were going to be bringing you some content here with the Mazdas. Um, got a couple things I want to do to the Speed 6 um, as we are going to be assembling an engine in the next week here and prepping and getting ready to go for that. But we have Dom coming over with the Speed 3. We got some goodies to show you guys that came in, uh, stuff that we're doing and to show you guys how it's gonna change the car and affect it in a better way and show you guys where we get some of this stuff so that you can improve your car as well but you'll see here soon so stay tuned i hear dom coming down the street yep there he is How you doing? Pretty good. Yeah. Hoodie and jeans weather though. It's nice. Dude, it's awesome. Everybody always loves this part right here. Whoosh. Bam. Look at her. It's always so good to look at, man. These cars are just awesome to look at. I love it. Guys, we're going to dig into the Speed 3 today, like I was saying, and dab a little bit in the 6 to get that thing ready to go. But there's a little issue that we're having with the car that we're trying to figure out. Um, Dom was noticing some lean conditions at wide open throttle. Um, and obviously we know, you know, where that limit is and when to, when to let off and, and stuff like that. So what's happening is during his logs at wide open throttle at hundred percent throttle position, it is, you know, dropping into like the elevens, tens, you know, kind of where we have it tuned at. Um, but what's happening is we're seeing a voltage drop during that wide open throttle pull and it's it's starting to raise up into the 12s um and and sometimes has spiked for about a, a thousandth of a second to like you know 13 or something like that and that's that's worrisome because that's not what you want especially during a wide open throttle pull um you don't want to see any of those numbers for an extended period of time um so what what dom actually did yesterday is we kind of narrowed it down to an alternator yeah um so you ran over you have an auto zone yeah just uh yeah. Random off the shelf alternator. Right. So we we figured that might have been the problem. So you yeah. yanked it off and went over yesterday, got a new alternator from AutoZone and slapped it on there. And we did a couple you did a couple logs. Yeah. And we were kind of seeing the first one was great and the second one we were kind of seeing the same thing. Right. So I'm wondering like one of two things. Is is the battery an issue, even though the alternator runs right. the car, it may just be enough to run the car and the battery's not contributing in any way. I wonder if I could see what the voltage is at. Because when you pulled up, it was at 13.6 while running. Yeah, and then when I first started it today, it was at 14, and then it dropped all the way to 13.6 by the time I got here. Okay, so it's slowly dropping. So it's, it's basically doing enough to run the car. Yeah. So my thing is that we have one of these Odyssey batteries in here, and Odyssey makes good batteries but it is very small. It is a very small battery and I just don't know if it's enough to keep up for a daily driven car. If you were at the track, I think it would be plenty right. on a charge, but I just don't think it's putting up enough. Um, now, one thing that I've researched Dom um, is that we're, we're gonna eventually, we're just gonna switch over to a full size oh, battery, sure. I think. And if you guys notice in my Speed 6, I have a Optima battery in here. Now, 10 to 15 years ago, Optimas were sick, but let me turn my, light on here um i have a red top in here and honestly nowadays these batteries suck compared to what they used to be and I, I i found that out through people and research but i am going to be switching to this uh new battery that is online you can get on amazon or summit the battery is like a excess power these are like the new hotness for anything agm um and agm is the style battery you want especially if you're remote mounting a battery like in the trunk um, this is their 3400 XS series, 12 volt, three, 3300 amp, um, high output battery. Uh, it's 339, which is, you know, a normal cost of an AGM like this, uh, caliber, kind of like how the Optimas are priced. But I think this is going to be the move, I think for probably me and Dom, just yeah. because it's, it, this is like the best you can get right now, uh, for like a street car. And they also sell 16 volt batteries as well. Um, if you have, you know, a lot of stuff drawing from the car. So we're going to check over some stuff and just kind of verify some things. 
to just kind of see if we can figure it out if there's like a draw somewhere or if something's not connected um fully like a loose ground or something like that or check the battery terminals but uh yeah we're gonna pop the bumper off probably take a look at some stuff and get going but dom we had a package show oh, yeah. up and i'm, I'm waiting a while. dude it is ridiculous guys you guys know if you guys have ordered anything delivery times have been outrageous i know the postal service is the worst of them all right now we had a package that was supposed to be here on like the 17th of august and it ended up not showing up till like august 31st it was great ridiculous it's like 15 days past what it was the tracking literally didn't update for <laughs> weeks and we were like what the heck is going on and it finally showed up so i'm gonna go grab that real quick so we can open it up and show them bum, ba, ba. Pizza. so pizza pizza's here so what we have and we're about to open it up and show you it's a little extra loving from michael ray over at ray's mazda parts and this is going to be key for all the shifts oh yeah we're going to show you guys here got a knife yeah here you go the there blade go. all right what do we got bud got the good so Michael Ray has been doing an amazing job to support this platform and do some R&D and make some incredible parts. And we've been waiting a while to do these. Anybody that has problems shifting in their car, um, Michael Ray has come up with amazing solutions um, for the platform. And right here, we have some amazing parts. And that is the upgraded aftermarket shifter cables. And my Lanta, these things are beefy, dude. Yeah, they are. Dude, the pictures online do not do these things justice. These are meaty. <laughs> so let me get these out here and lay them down. So these are upgra upgraded shifter cables. Well, they're upgraded, and for anybody that knows the Mazda speed shifter cables, they have a tendency to stretch and break. These are a solid um, rod in here that will literally never break. Um, and what this is gonna help is those flat foot shifts where you're banging gears, like absolutely banging gears, they will have no slop and be very notchy and feel amazing. And with that comes his other product. Now this, if you guys remember, I was explaining it on the Speed 6. So the stock clutch line on a Mazda Speed is this whirly whippy do swirly boy um, that loops around, it's big, ugly, and stupid um well the speed six has a better slave cylinder mine's destroyed i gotta get a new one um so this is an upgraded slave cylinder for the mazda speed three and it comes with a new clutch line that eliminates all that crap and kind of cleans up that area down there by the transmission and this is only going to help the situation we're going to get some fresh fresh fluid fresh lines fresh shifter cables you already got a clutch and then these brackets are actually what goes on the transmission um and you guys can see this is this is really nice stuff man like the machining work on this and powder coating oh, yeah. is amazing your stock shifter cables look like this right and they have a tendency to stretch and then these are your you know crap cables and you notice on these these kind of just pop into a socket which is not optimal for anything high speed or shifting high speed i should say like fast shifts because they the speed sixes um had an issue where these were popping off and michael made a keeper for them to keep them on but this is his permanent solution to to rectify the whole thing and just upgrade all the cables all the bracketry and just 100 percent badass man like this dude is a legend he's also you know making a lot of stuff for the speed six like abs relocation kits um you got him and uh or uh, chad from race Aesthetics making a ac uh ac line relocate he's got that already made up it's it's just awesome the little stuff like this is what keeps the platform alive and going and it's great but enough about this you guys can find this i'll have it linked below that you can check it out hit him up for any questions um but uh i think we need to get to work pop the bumper off and check some things out oh, and yeah. uh and we'll see man we might have enough time to put this in today not sure but i just wanted you guys to see it here first those things are big. legendary man yeah. like these are freaking monsters you're never gonna break these yeah these are ridiculous this is one thing you want beefy so that you don't snap them or stretch the cables right so pretty awesome man good on you mike uh keep it on going man i got stuff i got them coming for the speed six as well i'm ordering my cables and i'm waiting on my clutch line because uh he was having a shortage on parts and fittings from the company he was getting them from so i i you know, have a little bit of a wait time behind mine, but he had stuff ready for the Speed 3 ready to go. So 
Awesome stuff. Awesome, awesome stuff. Real quick, I got a new fuel cell for the Speed 6. Dom, you want to pull that up? I'll hold the box. Oh, oh. So it's uh, kind of sloped to aim the fuel downward, which is pretty awesome. That is got all sick. the mounting hardware, and it's all dash 10 uh, out the back or out the front and the Still top. Breeze or not. Uh, this is actually for a... Uh, in tank pump? No, it's actually for a fuel level sensor. Oh, that's so actually you, sick. Yeah, so you can actually wire this up and uh, get like a fuel level gauge. Some high tech uh, stuff. So I might run a line to the front just so I know what the status of that is, but um, these are all dash 10. Like I said, I got a pretty nasty pump coming. It's actually off of Justin's uh, drag car that um, needed a brushless pump. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab that, some filters, and I need new AN lines to run back to the front and then front to the back for the return. So pretty awesome. That's going to be a, a pretty beefy setup that's going to be trunk mounted. Can't wait. Garage is a mess. Got parts everywhere. And uh, like I said, we're going to be doing a lot with next week with this thing, getting the engine assembled and ready to rip. Um, might even get the engine on the engine stand today and get it prepped and ready to go That'd be sick. for the head to drop on. So pretty pumped for you guys. But let's pop this bumper off and get to work. Hey, buddy. What's going on, dude? Nothing much, man. So we're working on Dom's car right now, and we are having an issue with voltage. Now, what's happening is we were doing some wide open throttle testing because he was noticing a couple lean conditions for like a thousandth or two of a second. Um, and so he had a lifetime warranty on his alternator, so we swapped that out. And the first pull was good, but the second pull was showing it dropping down into like the 11s and 10s for most of the wide open throttle portion and then it was spiking up to like 12 and 13s um and for some reason the fail safe's not working uh on that which we gotta i gotta look into but the uh we're trying to figure out why the voltage under wide open throttle is dropping as he's driving well i mean the alternator is going to shut off you know what i mean it's not going to be under like when you go heavy load, it's like an AC compressor, you know what I mean? It turns it off so that you have the most performance. Oh, okay, gotcha. I did not know that. That's <laughs> that's interesting. Basically what's happening is as soon as we see a lean condition, we're noticing the least amount of voltage. So I would assume that, I mean, based off of what you just said, that's it might be semi-normal. I'm trying to figure out maybe if we need to... Um, Right. So I'm wondering if maybe, do you think it might be like a, a pump not keeping up or if it's maybe like the pressure just needs to be adjusted up a little bit? I mean, you can turn the pressure up a little bit, but normally like, you know, like in MoTeC or AEM or whatever, I mean, when you put in your injector data, it's based off of battery voltage. So the injector pulse width would be longer with lower battery voltage, where a split second doesn't have any of the... Compensation. Right, so that's just basically whatever you set it at is what it is. Exactly. Okay, yeah. gotcha. I mean, so, if it's, only running, if it's only a lean blip, like as small as you're talking about, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, cool. Yeah, the uh, yeah, it's literally only like right at the top of the uh, like the throttle position being at like 100%. It's like right at the end of that before he lets off. So, I don't know if he's letting off and it's still showing you know 100% for that split freaking second. And it's showing the the lean going up for when it recovers, or or what? Yeah, the fail safe. There's, there's like a delay. Like you can set the delay to be longer or shorter. But I want to say that the delay is like around 500 milliseconds or something like that. Okay, so that would kind of make sense based on what we were looking at. Because I, I was just I I was confused because I'm like, the alternator should be keeping up, but I didn't know it shuts off under wide open throttle that's i'd never I, I never knew that and now i learned that <laughs> it's, like a, it's a generator that has load so yeah that makes sense now okay yep. sweet so we'll check that out and then uh we'll uh maybe adjust the pressure a little bit if we're noticing any kind of more yeah i mean you can turn, you can turn the fuel pressure up a little bit and it'll just run a little bit richer yeah because i think we have it set at like 40 43 pounds of pressure while the car is off so maybe i'll just bring it up to like 45 or something like that 40 yep. and see if that makes a difference well man i appreciate it i appreciate the tech tip i didn't know that about the alternator so that's good to know um so we're check some things out i'll uh maybe turn the fuel pressure up a little bit do a log look at it, look at it real quick and then uh i'll let you know how it goes 
Alright, sounds good, man. Alright, buddy, I'll talk to you later. Right, later. That's why I love having a tuner like him. It just makes himself available to to literally just chat whenever um you know i i've have a really close working relationship with him i've been working with him for years and yeah we just grown close and it's you know become friends oh it's great so it's a great team that we got and he's saying now that i didn't know that the alternator shuts off during wild with throttle and honestly the way he said it it makes sense it right. just I, I guess i never really knew that and that's why i love doing this stuff at cars man because this is what i told you because dom you know never really worked on anything car wise before this and he he was telling me the other day is like more the more stuff he does the more stuff he learns and like this is just a prime example it's like you know i've been working on cars for a while and i did not know that so that's really good information so now i think what we're gonna do is i think the pump is good and i think it's ripping i think we're gonna try to bring up the pressure a little bit because sometimes these gauges aren't completely accurate and it may be a little low we're gonna kind of adjust that bring it up a little bit and see if that makes a difference so we might go out and do a hit here definitely a battery is in store for this thing all right guys so we got the battery out this is 100 percent our issue because dom went to go turn the car on like with just battery power to adjust the pump and the pump just sounded like it was struggling uh we barely were holding pressure and he went to go start it and the battery was dead so i know that any voltage issue we're having is coming from the battery it's not supplying and based off what justin said if the battery if the alternator shuts off during a wide open throttle pull it's relying on battery power to power the stuff that we have running off of it so it's relying off battery power to supply like voltage to the pump and stuff like that during a wide open throttle pull which would explain why we're having a voltage drop. right if the battery is dead yeah so what we're gonna do in a pinch we're, we're gonna switch to a full-size battery for sure but 100%. for right now we're gonna take this battery to napa and see if they have a similar size battery that we can run for now and this one's definitely shot because if you look close guys it's separating right here and it's bulging on the side so i don't know if it has like a bad cell or something or something expanded but it's got a bow out right here and it's cracked on the side so i don't know what caused that but both sides are like that it's got a big bow out on the side so something's going on something's definitely going on with it there's something going on and it's bad there's a problem there's something wrong something's going on so we're going to take this over to napa see if they got something that's similar size that we can try to throw in and go from there all right ladies and gents got a new battery this is a motorsports battery as well and still small because we're not going to do the battery relocate until the winter but we got another agm style napa legend battery um this will just have to do it's actually got more cold cranking amps than the other one did it's a little bit wider so we just got to make sure it fits into this <laughs> mount which might be tight um so we will see if it works but we'll make it work regardless so we're gonna get this in and uh go from there got my man vince detailing the truck looks good dude <laughs> he's savage but we got the battery in and uh the pump is ripping so i think we're good the test is right here go ahead dom give her a good cold start take off we'll let this bad girl warm up real quick and uh go take it for a test hit pretty sick sometimes that's all it is guys the battery we just noticed a voltage issue i i just happened to think of logging uh logging voltage with everything else and seeing if we had a drop and it was 100 that so dude this car looks so menacing without the bumper on yeah it does it's ridiculous Take it in, boys. Take it in. Got the meaty 
our triple eights just letting it hang out still spinning through second still spinning through second gear even on the 30 pound map <laughs> yep so sweet deal back up and ripping we're gonna get the new uh or get the bumper back on and uh we'll be good to go all right so the main the main point of this is it's super important to make sure you're paying attention to air fuel ratios For stuff real. like that because on a built car like this anything could happen like there something can come unplugged or you know just come loose come undone there's a lot more vibration a lot more happening than if you had like just a minor bolt-on car right it just it, it is what it is that's it comes with every built car you just have to 100 percent just keep looking over it all the time you know i always tell dom the first thing when he got the car is like nut and bolt check everything often like every time i used to come home i i would open the hood and just look at stuff you know before i go out just look at stuff because right. you just never know man there could be a, a melted vacuum line there could be a wire loose something like that so i always you know we always check over everything and luckily he saw that the fuel was getting some lean spikes and it led to this just a, a simple battery issue right you know? so it's it, it really is important that you guys pay attention to small stuff and not always jump to big conclusions so um we've learned that over the years and it is uh it's good i'm not saying it's 100 percent corrected but i'm pretty sure i'm i'm like 90 something percent positive right, that, that that's gonna fix it because the other battery literally had no juice to it at and a all crack in it yeah and a crack and a bulge so it, i mean it was ridiculous so literally you can if you're not paying attention to stuff like that that's how quick a motor can get blown up right if, if you're granted you weren't that lean it was yeah. it was literally a fraction of a second um but if you're not realizing your lean conditions if you have one you know you could have a clogged injector or something or even something as simple as a battery not making your pump flow as much as it should right boom there you go you can you can throw a rod out the block real quick um so lesson learned you know there's there's stuff to check over all the time and uh just pay attention to what you're doing but could have you know stuff like that you could have lost the car you know what i mean you could you could definitely blow up a car by not paying attention so it's it's more important to log stuff and you know check some stuff over and just basically i just call it the vitals man like check yeah. your vitals often to make sure everything's good to go but uh we'll probably get this thing out make some quick rips and then uh you guys will have to wait until the next video for the draggy content because we're gonna film an entire episode on that um on multiple different maps on this car we're gonna do the low boost which is about 25 pounds 30 pounds medium map and a 35 pound high map um and draggy all of them to give you guys accurate zero to 60 times um as much as you can because it's going to spin a lot but the more thing i'm concerned about is a 60 to 130 because it is going to be rowdy at that i mean 60 130 is what everybody you know on the interwebs nowadays is worried about you know right. these crazy fast cars uh i'm gonna guess this thing does somewhere in like the i don't know five five to six second range in the uh 60 to 130 on full boost um could be further off but we'll see um right but it'll be it'll be it'll be fun nonetheless and i want to kind of start doing like a full like draggy series and just start dragging you cool. know all of our cars and, and even other stuff i got planned in the works right now but uh yeah so we'll probably head out here and uh just look it over pay attention to the, the afrs and all that stuff and it should be good to go i honestly think it'll be ready to ready to rip all right going out in the three gonna go uh test this thing drive around a little bit and uh just check the uh, afrs and voltage and stuff make sure we're good to go see how she does yeah buddy
the top end RPM range yeah. where we can kind of bring in the higher fuel, make sure it's getting enough fuel pressure up top for show. Because that's honestly where you see that little blip is like right up top. So maybe it's a little bit more fuel pressure and it'll be it'll be Gucci, man. It'll be real good. Mm -hmm. Things a ripper. Yeah, it's definitely pulling. Well, guys, another great video with the Speed 3. We're going to be closing it out there. Like I said, we have a draggy video coming for this thing to do some zero to, or, uh, 60 to 130 testing on all different maps. It'll be a great time, but we needed to get this corrected before that happened. Um, should be good to go now. Huge thanks to Justin over at Freak Tune for the phone a friend that we had going on. As always, got this thing sorted, and we'll be back with another episode soon. Dom, working good. Oh yeah. Happy with it? For sure. Absolutely. It's going to be sweet. Get some more sends before the, the season ends, but we'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.